What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Tuesday, December 26th, 2023, and the market is open. It's 12.20 Eastern time, so just afternoon here on the East Coast, and I figured I'd record this video showcasing some of the positions that I opened here today piggybacking off of the video that I recorded pre-market. So that video is being uploaded to YouTube right now and I will be set live shortly. But in the meantime, since I had a little bit of downtime, the market hasn't really been doing much. I just wanted to highlight something that I mentioned in that video before around the 475 level. So knowing that there's a lot of gamma around this level, it's the absolute gamma strike. It is the highest positive gamma strike. It has the highest open interest for calls and puts combined for the week. And it's also the strike price that has a lot of call open interest. On top of that, we took a look at the calendar and we know there isn't really any major catalyst for today as well as tomorrow there's a couple later in the week pre-market but nothing of major significance so one of the ways in which i like to execute on that is first of all i'll start with the zero dte and then i'll also start with the end of the week kind of overarching swing trade if i don't have any other current positions open i cleared out most of my positions on last week so i was able to start fresh this week and then knowing that is the end of the year i don't really want much margin in use i don't want these massive positions because i don't have to worry too much most of us are still in slides holiday mode however i don't want to miss out on making some sort of money here so this is the risk profile that I currently have. So 555 bucks for the day, nothing too massive, not really large positions for me with the type of size that I would generally like to trade with. As you guys can see here, the BP being used overall is $11,000. So that is the buying power of the margin that's being used. Sometimes that number is a little bit incorrect on uh, TOS here, but for the most part, I'm not using anything massive. So anybody with a $20,000, $25,000 account size, this is generally a type of trades that you can consistently trade daily or a couple times a week, especially if you're using some sort of edge like gamma exposure. The only other levels that I have on this chart would be the VWAP strike right here, which is this gray level. And then this is the two day anchored VWAP right here. So as we know, the market opens right at this second highest absolute gamma strike. And then price ended up going right up to this uh, super strike right here. I just call it a super strike because there's a conglomerate of all sorts of significance on the options training at around 475. So it's a super strike, made it stand out a little bit more as mentioned in the video uh, pre-market. And by the time you guys see this video, you should have watched the one that just came out. I will link to it in the description down below in case you missed it. So all I'm thinking is the market is going to be choppy right around this area. How do I capitalize off of that? I'm going to start with the king of non-directional strategies as the iron condor. So we'll use option strat to actually look at the positions just because I think it's a little bit more user friendly versus jump in between think or swim here or there. I save my strategies in option strat to track them here because sometimes the think or swim user face can become a little bit clunky, a little bit slow for me. And I like to be able to just glance pretty quickly and have a, a you know, a brief understanding of what positions I'm in, as well as whenever I share them in the quant trading app discord, it's pretty easy for newer traders to also read this. And not everyone is on think or swim. Some people use Tasty, some other people use interactive brokers. Everybody's platform is different. And I think option strat is one good universal language for anybody that's trading spreads. So this is my zero DTE trade. I grabbed, let's see here. I grabbed four of them, I believe. Yeah, zero DT. So I have four. I didn't close any yet. So this is just a quick, you know, return for this for uh, this was open at 10 30 eastern time here so i even waited an hour after the market opened as i was still working on the previous video i ended up missing out on an earlier entry that i would have liked to execute but that's fine and if we take a look at the uh, percentage on max risk this is a 13 percent return for a zero dte iron condo which is great i should start taking profit pretty soon but i figure let me just record this video before i start taking profit and then probably leave one until the end of the day power hour to see what will happen so this is one quick return here again just starting with if the spy is at the absolute gamma strike as well as the highest positive gamma we're in an overall net positive gamma environment so the expectation is reduced volatility as i mentioned in the video before i don't see much of a reason for the market to make any sort of large explosive moves maybe if we see some sort of te technical pattern forming then that might change my mind we do have this ascending triangle that's forming we also do have this right here so this would be that ascending triangle so if price was to break yes some momentum can trigger and and price can accelerate to the upside but uh, however we do have some potential resistance here from last week and then we have this level here potentially from last week so they have a little bit of security on the levels right above us so that's why the first expectation would be some sort of consolidation and then maybe a slower melt up although my profit target has been hit 10 percent on a zero dte you should be taking profit but i decided to just leave it for purposes a of recording this video showing you guys some live positions i didn't want to close them and then talk about them after the fact and i figure whenever i get the opportunity to talk about a live Live position that's currently on i will try to do that going into next year 
Then I just jumped on and I said I didn't really want much upside risk, so I opened up a broken wing butterfly. This is here for tomorrow because the expectation would be we are in a overall net positive gamma. We've seen how price has been continuously gravitating towards the positive gamma strike, so that's our P1 strike. And then if this level was to hold, the expectation would be we will continue to drift up to the next high positive gamma strikes, which would be up there. And then I highly doubt it, but there is the possibility also of 480. So instead of you know trying to pigeonhole myself and saying, I think it's going to be exactly here. And then if it goes past this level, I end up losing. I decided to make it broken wing. So therefore, I have something a profile that looks like this. It doesn't really matter how high the market goes. Obviously, if it's in a certain area, then you profit a little bit more. I love broken wing butterflies. These are my favorite strategies to run for directional trades when I don't have massive conviction. Because it also means if the spy was to pull back and then we just hovered right around here, then there's the possibility to make a ton of money. Whether I swing this or not, not entirely sure. Uh, yet I will wait till power hour to decide on that. But again, it's just that idea or that understanding we're holding VWAP all day here today. So there's no real reason to look for a short trade. We haven't closed below it. 15 minute time frame is my favorite time frame. It makes trading so much easier for me, especially just waiting instead of overreacting or making decisions prematurely. It allows me to wait. If the spy was to get below the two day anchor VWAP, then I would not want to be in that trade and I will likely take some sort of a stop loss. The stop loss will be very small relative to the probability of success for if the spy was to continue going up or if it was just, just to just stay in this area moving on from there i then decided to hop into a iron fly for thursday now so i have my zero dte i have my positions for tomorrow then i have my two dte so these are the positions for thursday this is just if the spx slash spy was to hover around this absolute gamma strike there's a possibility to make a ton of profits now i might not hold this until thursday might end up closing this out tomorrow and then you guys can see this is a nice 50 percent return on the uh, margin that's being used so that would be about 262 bucks or so 280 bucks depending on how long it's held and then obviously it can be considered a lot a lotto if i decide to just hold it until thursday and see what happens and maybe end up with some sort of a massive win again using very small margin here this week i don't really want any massive positions there's still a ton of other work i do need to get done aside from just trading so that's one of the decisions normally i would have a lot more size in a lot of these positions knowing how to approach each week for a trader is pretty smart because it will help you manage your positions correctly especially if you're not using large size then from there i decided to hop into an iron condor for the end of the week here being friday all based on the same analysis that I made pre-market here today. So with this iron condor, similar, just expecting some sort of consolidation or choppy price action around this area. I believe I grabbed uh, I mean, three of those. So let's see what that looks like here. So this is three. So using under 3,200, whereas my standard for I like to use for these types of trades is anywhere between five to 10,000. So I'm using a little bit less than 60% of how much I would normally use the same thing for a zero DTE here, keeping it under 3,000. These are comfortable sizes for me in terms of margin. And that allows for lighter trading. I can step away from the charts. I can just set some alerts. If you guys already see here, I have an alert set for just in case we did break up above this level, I should be a little bit worried or I should come in and tweak or, or manage or, you know, just check in for the most part so that again is just based on these gamma exposure levels and then using it uh and putting it into action if i were to check out the spx for example here let's just take a look because again i am executing my positions off of the spx and as we uh come right here let's take a look for tomorrow based on the positions that I have open. Let's just take a look at this right here. The break even on this is 47.55. 47.55 is right here. So just above this level, the reason I might consider swinging it is because of the way the gamma exposure looks right now. I don't see much of a reason for the SPY to actually break below uh, Friday's uh, power hour. However, if it does, again, I will close that position, take a small loss here or there, or I might just grab some cheap out the money puts. Again, have not decided. I'm just sharing with you guys some of the thought process and how I use that information to put together very low stressful uh, positions that I can allow me to actually record these types of video videos even though I'm trading as your DTE. I would never be able to you know, focus on recording a video during the live market hours, especially if I have huge size in these positions and I'm actively managing, tweaking and adjusting them. I would ideally love to hold until about 1.30, so another hour or so is what I'm planning to uh, 
hold the zero DET positions just because that theta decay is going to be amazing. And if it can be held until the end of the day, obviously the return will be pretty huge. I'm looking and pay attention to the opening range. So this is our 15 minute candle right here. So this is something that is just very old school technical analysis, zero DT trading. Almost every trader I think or knows that has any type of experience with trading intraday. It is from the playbook or the, the rule book of zero DT trading is some traders use that 15 minute opening range. Some other traders use the 30 minute opening range. When volatility is pretty low. I like to use the 15 minute uh, opening range or for the most part, I'll use the 15 minute candle. So this 15 minute candle is letting me know this is what the range is for this day. And since we're outside of that 15 minutes range, the probability or the odds of us closing down here become a little bit slimmer. However, if price was to get back below this level here, it will also be below VWAP. That will change my bias for the day. But for the most part, as long as we're remaining above here, I'm not so worried about the puts that I have sold for the zero DTE iron condor. And then at the same part, we can see that there is a Friday's uh, high of day right here to act to like likely act as some sort of resistance. And that's why I have this notification set here. On top of that, I'm using the gamma exposure for the zero DTE. So this is the constant feed within the quant trading app discord. And you guys know at this point it has been showcased in many other videos right here every 15 minutes, the zero DTE for the spy gamma exposure is being updated. And that's why I don't need to draw zero DTE levels on my charts. These levels are updating frequently because it's zero DTE. Gamma is most sensitive, the closer and closer it gets to expiration and then the closer it is to the at the money strikes. So if you were constantly be drawing these levels on your chart, you'd be at your desk all day long, just constantly drawing levels and actually missing out on trades. So I just kind of quote unquote subscribe to this feed. I'm just paying attention to these uh, zero DT channels here as they're coming in. And if we were to take a look at a little bit earlier here in the session, so around 10 a.m. Eastern time, 15, 10, 15 Eastern time here, let's just take a look at this one. As I was looking to mock up some of the trades, oops, I uh, cancel it. So let this load up again. I just took note of this is a high positive gamma strike. It's the absolute gamma strike for the zero DTE. So I shorted the 4780 call. So just passed it just to give it a little bit of buffer in case we did end up getting up to here. And my range to the downside, I, pay, I was paying attention to this is where the positive gamma turns negative right about here. So I just loosely just figured, you know, from here to about here is a good range for the zero DTE iron condors building on top of, again, the larger analysis that we have. If I were to just jump back to the SPY, again, half the time, I'm not really looking at the um, SPX. I'm just focusing on the SPY and then using the SPX options to execute the trades. Building on top of this, I already know what the super strike is here, this 40, this 475, and we're above VWAP, and gamma is overall positive, so I'm not expecting much volatility. So I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller range here. Instead of selling like a 10 delta call or a 10 delta puts, that iron condo will you know most likely be wider, but then the premium collected would be so low that I wouldn't really be interested. So I was able to collect, if we were to... Uh, drop back to this. I was able to collect $2.65 on a $735 margin trade. This is really high. If you know anything about trading zero DTE iron condors, you know, this is a really high uh, delta position to be running. My short put was about a negative 0.20 delta. And then my short call was a 0.25 delta. So this is relatively high from, you know, the iron, the zero DT iron condor playbook that I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would be aware of. If you trade zero DT iron condors, a zero DT credit spreads, you pay attention to the Trady Ticks uh, YouTube channel and you follow sort of the, you know, the standard playbook where you want wider iron condors to increase your uh, probability of success or your chance for profit. In this case here, I tightened the iron condor because of my overall understanding of the gamma exposure, because of, you know, understanding the suppressed volatility that's expected. Of course, because of looking at the fact that there isn't really any major catalyst. Of course, building on the context of the time of year, it is the day after Christmas, the expectation for low volume. All these things are the reason in, way, in ways you can, you know, use context to make some sort of educated decision on what you're going to do with your zero DTE trades. So this is the thought process that I brought into here and then just size down so I can be comfortable with, you know, three, four under three grand. Again, as I mentioned earlier in this video, it's not that uh, large or I'm not that worried about this type of uh, size here. And then as we continue along, let's just pull this closer to this right here. So that's where I, in a sense, got my range from. Then on top of that, as I'm looking for the week, we already know we've been this this right here is the spy 
sorry, this is for next week. Let me just jump to the SPY weekly. I'm not building on any swing trades yet. It's going to be the fresh start of the new year. I don't think I want to uh, hold any swing trades into the new year over the weekend. So I'm just paying attention to this week. I know that 480 level is pretty significant on the SPY all the way down to this 470. So as I'm building the the uh the uh, iron condor for the balance of the week here i'm paying attention to that and i want an iron condor that is below 4700 and then above 4800 so this is about as tight as i felt comfortable going i could have gone much wider obviously to increase the chance of success but even a trade such as this one this is not a bad return within one day we're looking at a four percent return if i were to hold it overnight and the market was to continue consolidating around here Granted, if there's no spike in implied volatility, this trade here by around this time, say, for example, or just after the uh, morning session, uh, let's just say implied volatility was to go up just a little bit. We're looking at a 10% return at least by tomorrow if the SPX continues to hover around here. And that's a great return also on an uh, iron condor that is less than 4 or 5 DTE and greater than a 2 DTE. These are the types of returns that I like, feel comfortable, they're easy to hit, they're consistent. And then instead of holding, wishing for that lottery at the end of the week, might be done trading for the week, maybe by Wednesday or so, and just take some small scalp here and there so just wanted to paint the picture of some sort of you know application to how i can you can a trader might use some of these levels i'm not you know taking huge directional trades all the time and then as well as how do you capitalize on when the market is being choppy you can run these types of spreads might close out the day around 800 bucks potentially it would be great to close out the day at a thousand but that would require a lot of uh, power hour risks that i might not feel comfortable with as we're chatting let me just see what my uh, pnl looks like uh, right now so 640 bucks. I think it's been up about $100. I've been recording this video for the past 15 minutes and already up over 100 bucks. And then we'll see where things land in the next hour. So around 800 bucks or so. Again, I'm technically being greedy here, but it's just I'm not too worried, which is usually when things go wrong. So I'm going to cut this video here just to make sure I'm not missing anything in price action. I'm going to review some of the gamma exposure and then uh, look to take some some sort of risk off so I don't ruin a good start to what can potentially be a very uh, simple, low risk low maintenance type of week. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. And I will try to do again, as many type of live examples throughout the trading day next year, whenever I get the opportunity, whenever things are slow, even comment down below, like the video, share the video. If you learned something and if you're interested in quant trading app, the links are in the description. I'm the lead developer for quant trading app. So that's why I mentioned it a lot in some of these videos. I'm showcasing my analysis exactly the way in which I would approach the markets. And obviously I'm going to be biased to the tools within quant trading app because they're built showcasing exactly what I look for. And I like to keep a very simple approach to trading. Simple, obviously, is relative. I've been trading for a while. So trading an iron condor and mixing it with a broken wing butterfly and then, you know, adding a 3DT iron butterfly and then a 4DT iron condor, that might seem complicated to another trader if you're now starting out with spreads. But when you've been doing this for a few years, it is not that complicated. I'm just building on the main idea that this is this super strike here we should be choppy around this level, if not for a couple days, at least for two to three hours. And that is more than enough to squeeze out a 10, 15% return on margin. And that's what I'm looking for. Tomorrow, we'll see where we are. If the market is all the way down here, let's just say the market was to a gap down overnight and imply volatility was crazy high. And then I saw that there was some sort of divergence in implied volatility. I'll be targeting this level for a directional trade for the following day. So I'll probably go with a one DTE broken wing butterfly or something really cheap, something where I can get like a four to 300 percent return maybe on overnight going into thursday but i don't know that hasn't happened yet the same thing with if we're up here i don't know yet all i know is as we are around here this price this strike price will likely act as a magnet and this is something i've been repeating for the entire year about these absolute gamma strikes they act as magnets and after price has hovered around the high liquidity zones for a while we will break away from it but depending on how we break away price likely likes to return to it within a few days that's where i get some sort of a directional edge in and i'm always paying attention to the vix which is the proxy for implied volatility so i felt inclined to just mention that Again, let me know if you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.